Hello everyone! The third week of the Genshin 5.2 beta has begun and both Chaska and Oron received their first notable changes to their kits. And while some of these updates are quite minor, some other kit updates specifically for Chaska are quite impactful, changing the power level of our potential meta team comps. A ton of numbers were either added, increased or decreased, and as a result it can get really confusing to know whether or not these changes are overall buffs or nerfs for the two upcoming characters. So I wanted to simplify and analyze this week's changes and explain how they affect the overall strengths of both Chaska and Oron. And if you're unsure about what Chaska and Oron do, especially for Chaska because their mechanics can get quite complicated, then I highly suggest watching my initial videos on their kits first. Let's go over Oron's kit changes first as they are pretty straightforward. First, his skill generates 4 Electro Particles now. Previously, it generated 3. Oron's burst is something you want to use as it does decent damage so the extra particle is nice for slightly lowering his ER requirements. Second, his A1 passive procs got a multiplier buff. It is increasing from 130% attack to 160% attack. Assuming your team has consistent Electro Charge uptime and you proc his A1 at least 8 times per rotation, this results in a 240% multiplier increase which is quite a nice damage boost considering Oron's A1 passive is the core part of his kit, so a nice buff to his personal damage. Third, his A4 energy generation was made more universal. Initially, Oron was able to give up to 9 energy to your onfielder as long as he dealt hydro or electro damage. Now, it just requires normal charge or plunging attacks from the onfielder to get that energy. Ultimately, I don't think this change is too significant since his current team still need electro charge for his A1 to work, so you're likely going to have an on feeler that dealt hydro or electro damage anyways. However, I do think this change is going to be helpful in the future when more Notlong characters are released and you can rely on just their Night Soul aligned damage to proc Oron's A1 instead of electro charged. In this scenario, giving more universality to the A4 energy generation is great, as these hypothetical Oron teams may not need to be built around electro charged at all. And third, his exploration passives got some additions. Oron now gives increased gliding speed to the team, and it is now explicitly stated that when Oron does his special jump and is in the air, he can aim with his bow and he can interact with some things in the overworld. I still haven't done much exploration myself so I'm not sure if these are new things or not but it's cool nonetheless. Lastly, to balance out the buffs made to his base kit, Oron's constellations got some nerfs. The C1 damage increase to Oron's A1 procs was decreased from 60% to 50%. In addition, Oron C2 gives him less electro damage after using his burst. Before, you could get up to 60% electro damage bonus. This has been decreased to 40%. Now while losing 20% electric damage is a decent nerf, because Oron still gets 40% from C2, 46.6% from an Electro Goblet, and another 40% from 4P Scroll, he already had a lot of damage bonus already. So this nerf to a C2 isn't that bad. In summary, Oron's C0 base kit got some nice buffs while his C1 and C2 got some nerfs. Overall, even when taking into account the constellation nerfs, Oron's performance and strength hasn't really changed very much. He still has promising personal DPS and can buff his team, especially with 4P Scroll. And of course, if we just look at C0 Oron, he's just better now compared to before. Now let's talk about the Chaska changes, which are actually impactful to our overall kit. Both the Animal Bullets and the Converted Bullets from her special charged attack got some significant multiplier nerfs. The Animal Bullets don't matter too much, so let's focus on the bullets that actually get converted to the elements of your party, which are called Shining Shadow Hunt Shells. At talent level 10, each of these bullets got a 45% motion value decrease. Assuming a rainbow element team where Chaska always converts her third bullet, Chaska will fire 4 Shining Shadow Hunt shells every charged attack, and she performs 4 charged attacks per skill usage. So 4 times 4 equals 16 Shining Shadow Hunt shells. Thus, with the multiplier nerf, C0 Chaska will be losing a maximum of 720% motion value every rotation from her converted bullets. On its own, this is a significant damage nerf. However, this is going to be balanced out with the changes to Chaska's A1 passive. Its main mechanic of converting Chaska's third bullet of her charged attacks based on the number of different Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cry units on her team is still there, but now Chaska also gets increased damage bonus on all her Shining Shadow Hunt shells depending on her team composition. And this damage buff is the same type of damage bonus you would get from an Elemental Damage Goblet for instance. For example, in a Rainbow Element team comp, there are three different elements other than Chaska. Thus, she will have a 100% chance to convert her third bullet, and now she additionally gets 65% damage bonus for all her converted bullets she fires from her charged attacks. If the team was Double Pyro Single Hydro or has a Pyro Hydro and Geo character for instance, then Chaska has a 66.7% chance to convert her third bullet, and now she also gets 35% damage bonus to her Shining Shadow Hunt shells. Thus, although Chaska is getting multiplier nerfs, she is getting damage bonus in her kit to balance it out, which is great for Chaska because her initial kit had no inherent damage buffs whatsoever, which made her extremely reliant on things like Farina's buff and 4P scroll for damage percent. In addition, since she actually gets her own damage bonus now, going attack goblet will pretty much always be the best option. But how does this affect 
affects Chaska's overall strength. For teams that have three different pyro, hydro, electro, or cryo elements on the team, aka rainbow teams, they're getting a slight damage buff with these changes as they enable the full 65% damage bonus for Chaska. Example teams include Chaska, Farina Bennett, and a cryo unit like Layla for shielding and potential freeze and melts, or instead of a cryo unit, adding an electro unit like Auroron for overloads and electro charges. The Auroron version of the team specifically currently looks to be Chaska's highest damage team on paper. For teams that can't enable the full damage bonus and can only get 35 damage percent for Chaska's converted bullets, these teams are only slightly worse than before, but their damage is still looking relatively similar to before the changes. Example teams include Farina Double Pyro or teams where Shilonen or Kazuha are used as a support. Even though these teams don't activate the full damage buff from Chaska's A1 and may result in less converted bullets, the damage or buffs that units like Shangling, Shilonen, and Kazuha provide to Chaska are able to somewhat counteract these downsides. So overall, Chaska got a slight buff with these changes. Her non-rainbow teams didn't get too much of a damage decrease, but her rainbow teams got a slight increase, and just giving Chaska damage bonus within her kit is great so she isn't starved out of one particular damage stat like she was originally. Now funnily enough, Chaska's skill in A1 changes have made her constellation 1 worse. They only changed the wording of it this beta cycle, but the reason it's comparatively worse is that before these newest changes, C1 gave an extra converted bullet and allowed for a guaranteed chance to convert her third bullet in non-rainbow element teams. Thus, C1 was able to remove all the downside from running non-rainbow element teams, which is the chance of bullet conversion. However, now Chaska has a stacking damage bonus buff added to her A1 based on her team composition, and Chaska's C1 doesn't affect this portion of the A1. So now, Chaska's C1 only solves half the downside of using her in non-rainbow element teams. As with C1, these teams will still be getting only 35% damage bonus versus the full 65%. Now the sneaky thing that Hoyo did is that they actually did add the ability to get the full damage bonus with non-rainbow element teams, but instead of adding it to her C1, it's on her C2 instead, which just gives her an extra stack for the damage bonus. Definitely very weird that in order to remove all the downsides of running non-rainbow element teams, you need both C1 and C2, but I guess that's just a new way of baiting people to pull more constellations. The last thing in terms of constellations is that her C6 now decreases the charge time of her charged attacks, so on top of the instant charge she gets, Chaska will be able to get even more charge attacks with C6, so buffs to her constellations across the board. Finally, the more minor and insignificant changes that were made to Chaska. They decreased the fourth hit of her normal talent. I still have never understood why Hoyoverse changes multipliers of talents that a character will never use. Next, her second exploration passive was added, which gives extra phlogiston when your party defeats an enemy in the overworld. And lastly, Chaska's Night Soul and phlogiston consumption during her Night Soul state has been decreased by 30%. Now, at the moment, I think this only affects exploration, allowing Chaska to fly around longer. However, there may be a chance that this extra duration in Night Soul state allows her to use a fifth charged attack within a skill window at C0, as currently, 4 charge attacks is the current assumption. If this is possible, then Chaska's damage will get a pretty big buff. Currently, however, people with access to private servers have said that they can still only fit in 4. There is a chance that this is a skill issue moment, but since there isn't any evidence showing that you can fit 5 charge attacks yet, then this change probably just is an exploration buff. So overall, this week's changes are generally positive for both Chaska and Auroron. Auroron is still looking like a solid 4 star sub DPS and support for the electro charge niche, and Chaska is still decent. DPS, with her best looking team getting buffed. Don't have too much to add for Auroron, but for Chaska, it is evident that Hoyoverse is trying to push her team building incentive towards full rainbow element team comps, and I hope they don't push it fully in that direction, as I do like the idea that you can still use units like Shangling, Shilonen, and Kazuha, and the team still decently function. Because if they further make changes incentivizing full rainbow element team comps, then she's going to have only one good meta team, the Farina Bennett Auroron team that is drastically better than the rest, and that's because there are not that many good teammates that you can use her and fulfill the requirement of having all different elements. And even at her current state, you can argue that this team is her only good team as the other options are definitely behind in terms of damage. Thus, I would be very surprised if Chaska gets any additional nerfs in the upcoming weeks as she may need some buffs to catch up with the other top tier DPSs. I hope this beta update and analysis video on Chaska and Auron was helpful to you all in any way. If you enjoyed, don't be shy to like the video, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel for more pre-release news and guides. And with that, I hope you all all have a wonderful day.